Hey everyone, it's Hayes, and as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, <laughs> today's video is basically going to be me defending Zoe and basically discussing is she as bad as everyone says she is? But before we like go any further, I haven't read the show Bible or seen any of the leaks, so please do not discuss them in the comment section, that would be wonderful. And um, also, uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm only going to be talking about Zoe up until the end of episode 12, Perfection. I know a lot of you are waiting to watch the show in chronological order, um, so for that purpose I want everyone to be able to watch it. So I'm only going to be discussing Zoe's uh, role in the show, I'm only going to be mentioning anything she's done up until the end of Perfection. So whilst I have seen 16, 18, 19 and 20, I'm not going to be talking about those episodes in this video, not even in the slightest, I'm not even going to mention them after this point. Um, so this video will be safe for everyone to watch if you are waiting for episode 13 or 14 or 15 before you can watch 16 and so on and so forth. Um, so this video will be safe for everyone, um, but if you do want to discuss something Zoe does in a later episode in the comments, I would really appreciate it if you just like put spoiler in capital letters right at the start of your comments. So those people know to avoid it, but still please no leaks in the comments. Thank you very much. And the other thing I really want to hammer home at the start of this video is that all of this is going to be my own opinion. It is completely okay if you disagree, all right? like. <laughs> I just want to look at this as first and foremost, um, I would say like a pretty active member in the Miraculous Ladybug fandom. This is my favourite TV show. I love it dearly and I am so grateful that I can earn money um, to talk about my favourite TV show. That's just absolutely insane to me and I am so so grateful to be able to do this but I also want to explore it as a professional writer. I know it kind of <laughs> It's difficult to take me a bit seriously sometimes because of the jokes I make and because I call Gabriel daddy but I am actually a professional writer so I kind of wanted to look at it um, from both angles um, but I just like I said like it's all gonna be my own opinion both coming from the perspective of someone who just like sees things happen in the fandom but also as a professional writer so um, whilst I'm very active in my community and replying to the comments I don't really comment on anyone else's videos and that's not because I hate any of the other Miraculous creators, it's just because I look at their comment sections and through really no fault of the creator most of the time, just because of how toxic the community has gotten, I look at the comments and I'm just like, no thank you, I don't want someone horrible to reply to me. Just no. And where Zoe is concerned, kind of like the reason for this video, is like the amount of like hatred surrounding her. Like I said, I read other people's comment section and I go online and look at opinions about Zoe and if I had to put a rough percentage on this, obviously I haven't counted and worked it out precisely, I would say about 70% of the fandom have a negative view of Zoe for different reasons but like I would say the majority of the views on Zoe is that they really dislike it for whatever reason. So worry not, I have prepared myself, I kind of feel like this video is going to be very divisive. I am coming it from the angle that I actually really like Zoe, I've always um, really liked Zoe but I know a lot of people don't like Zoe. Um, so yeah, don't worry, I've already prepared myself mentally for the hate comments, um, but if you are just going to be rude, I will just delete the comment. I... no. Okay, it's fine if you disagree with me, but if you're going to be rude, then I'm just going to delete it. I am also far, far too busy to be arguing with people in the YouTube comment section, so if you want to have an argument with me, don't be a coward, call me on Discord instead! <laughs> And I would also really appreciate it if you could watch the whole video before you leave a comment. You'll kind of see why when I when we get to the end of the video, um, but it would really help if you didn't just leave a hate comment right away. At least listen to everything I've got to say before you're going to be rude. <laughs> Thank you very much. So obviously my own opinion, it's okay if you disagree and like I always said, besties don't always agree with each other, but besties always respect each other's opinions. So like I said, rude comments will just be deleted. I'm not having it, okay? You want to say something constructive because you disagree that's totally fine but being rude and being hateful will not be tolerated thank you very much so let's start with a quick recap of zoe from soul crusher to perfection so zoe is introduced in episode 7 of season 4 soul crusher where she steals some pastries from marinette then gets akumatized over a pair of shoes 
which is an absolute mood because me too girly pop. She realises that she doesn't care about fitting in with her family and decides to become friends with Marinette and the others against Chloe's wishes and then the episode after she ends up starring in a film the school are making because why not only for Chloe to get akumatized into the queen of all bananas and Zoe makes her controversial debut as Vesperia. She tells Chloe she loves her and then Chloe proceeds to throw up and we see Zoe sporadically throughout the rest of the season like in episode 9 Daddy Aggressed where she gets Marinette into the party at the party in episode 12 Crocodile being used as a human shield by Chloe in episode 13 Optigami playing football in episode 24 Penalty team because yay <laughs> and then staring angrily at the sky in episode 26 strike back because i get annoyed at the stars too she didn't really make an appearance this season until episode 10 transmission where very worried about marinette despite marinette being able to change her voicemail message to let everyone know she was sad zoe got the rest of the class to stop partying to help her only for Plague to give Zoe the cat miraculous. She and Plague get on great, but after developing a cheese addiction and one horrific musical number that left me in tears, Gabriel Babes finds out that Zoe is the new cat miraculous holder and paralyzes her, as you do to teenage girls. So Zoe hasn't done Lowe's, but she did use the Bee Miraculous once or twice, and she's now also used the Cat Miraculous, and she's become a good friend of Marinette's and like the rest of like the main ensemble of characters from what we've seen. And she's also apparently friends with Jess from the New York special, but not Aeon because Aeon is allergic to bees apparently. <laughs> so why is Zoe likeable? A common critique I see about Zoe is that we aren't given any reasons to like her other than she's nice. And while I wholeheartedly disagree with that comment, I don't see anyone criticizing characters like Rose in that way, arguably because Rose hasn't been given such an important place in the show. But when Zoe was first introduced in the show, she had about the same importance as Rose. She was someone in Marinette's larger friend group who used Miraculous upon occasion. Same as Rose, same as Julica, same as Malen, same as Kim, same as Max, same as Nathaniel, Mark, so on and so forth. She had no larger purpose in season four other than she was there to use the Bee Miraculous and that was really it and that was still a criticism I saw but no one was saying that about Rose or Malen or Julica so you know like they're also really nice and there aren't really any largely other reasons to like them that much. We know a bit more about those characters now but since the start of the show up until about season four at least for Rose and Julica they were just nice girls. Like we only found out in Guilt Trip that Rose has been really ill since she was a child. We also only found out in season four that Julica's dad is Jagged Stone and it actually seems like she has a really hard time connecting with him. We've known for a bit longer that Malen has had anxiety as we saw in Origins and in Horrificator which were obviously in season one but at least with Rose and Julica we haven't like had any other reasons to like like them or view them in a different way until really like season four, arguably season three for Julica with Reflect All. But all those girls are just nice and they all had the same relevance of Zoe in the show up until at the end of season four. So why is everyone complaining that Zoe is just nice but not about these other female characters? I don't really get it. So why is Zoe likeable? I can only speak for myself. I'd love to know all the reasons if you like Zoe, why you like her. But in my opinion, the reason why I like Zoe is that she is incredibly brave. She's come all the way from New York to France alone and she's only like 13, 14 years old. I couldn't go to either place on my own and I'm 26, okay? New York is an incredibly long flight. No way, I couldn't do that. And I also wouldn't do a flight to France on my own. And I live in England. France is really close. France is the nearest country to me. I wouldn't go alone. <laughs> I could not. Not at 26 and definitely not at 13, 14 years old. And also France isn't an English speaking country. I would assume like Zoe seems to have zero problem communicating when she's in France, but I would assume uh, French is not the language she spoke all the time when she was in America because it's America. Um, so that's an also an incredibly brave thing to do. And she's also going there to live with a family. She already knows who hate her and she have to stay. And I know it's not that bad. She is largely left alone as we saw in episode 11 this season. She has a fairly nice room. She has great friends, but it must be incredibly hard for her to know that the only person as far as we're aware who likes her in her family is her stepdad. Like her dad hasn't really been mentioned 
at all other than like he more than likely exists and because Zoe's last name is Lee I would assume his last name is also Lee but she hasn't mentioned him like Marinette mentions her other family members in passing during the show uh, Felix mentions his dad Adrian mentions his mum they all mention absent parents who are absent or the family members are absent for whatever reason Zoe hasn't mentioned her dad once so I'm assuming it's probably not a great relationship either and it does seem like her whole family from what we know so far hates her and I think that's an incredibly brave thing to do. I've always kind of viewed Zoe as kind of like a Cinderella kind of figure in the show. Like yeah she has a roof over her head, she gets to eat, she's like safe physically but her emotional needs aren't really met at all. Like of course there are worse things to go through in the world, I'm not saying like Zoe is having the worst time ever, I understand. However, she is technically living in an abusive household, uh, yet she still manages to be nice. It is really, really easy for people who've been abused, and I would argue someone like Chloe has been abused by her mother, it is really easy for that person to basically just copy the behaviour of their abuser and become just as horrible and mean and bitter or whatever, obviously it depends what the abuser did, but it's really, really difficult for someone who has been through that to come out the other end as a nice person. She is trying so hard to be nice and kind and good. Like it would be so easy for Zoe to start acting like Chloe and just bully everyone and then her family would like her. It would be so easy for her to do that and then she would finally have a family who loves her. But she doesn't do that because she wants to be a good person. Like in episode 11 towards the end when Plag basically leaves, he's like don't let it get to you, don't let your sister get to you, stuff like that. He was really there for her, I loved their relationship in that episode, it was so cute. And then the rest of you are like, no lol, she's just boring. Like, no she's not, I'm sorry, is someone being abused not interesting enough for you? So does Zoe have loads going on? No. But do other side characters either? Also no. How much do we know about Nathaniel, Rose, Julika, Malen, Max, Kim, Alex? Not a great deal, but I don't see anyone complaining about them. And I always see as well people saying about Zoe, well if you removed her from the show it wouldn't make a difference. And prior to episode 10 and 11 this season, yeah I'd agree, it wouldn't make a difference. But again, if you remove the rest of the members from the class, it really also wouldn't make that much of a difference either. Or better yet, just have them not say anything but just hang around to have like the atmosphere of a classroom because unless Marin and Adrian go to some weird private school with only two people in the class, <laughs> you need extra people in the classroom. So like if you just remove them all slash had the rest of the class not say anything ever again, they'd all largely have the same effect on the show they currently have. So it just seems a little bit of an invalid criticism to say that about one character when you're not holding the same energy for the rest of them. Right now, as it stands, the majority, not all, like for example Ali doesn't really apply to her, but the majority of the class is only there so they can use the other Miraculouses. If the show was like, there's only three Miraculouses, Ladybug, Cat Noir and Butterfly, if that was it, the rest of the class would not be needed. We wouldn't need to know their names, wouldn't need to know what they sounded like, wouldn't need to know who was dating who, whose parents did this, whatever. We would never need to know because it wouldn't be important really. They would have zero effect on the show if it weren't for the other Miraculouses. So yeah, if you did remove Zoe from the show prior to episodes 10 11 this season, it wouldn't make a difference the same way if you removed almost every other single character in the show. <laughs> So Zoe was arguably not introduced in the best way, which I would agree with if it were completely wrong. <laughs> arguably she is one of the only characters in the whole show who was foreshadowed as in like a new character who arrives in the middle of it. Obviously they couldn't foreshadow characters who were there since the start, but she's one of the only characters who have been foreshadowed. Kagami wasn't foreshadowed, Luca wasn't foreshadowed, and no one complains about them. Well, I complain about Kagami, but it's not because of how she was brought in. I actually think her debut episode was a really good way to introduce Kagami. Uh, that's not the reason I dislike Kagami. <laughs> but I, like, they weren't foreshadowed in the slightest, in my opinion, and I don't see anyone complaining about them. But also, like, I see a lot of people saying, oh, well, like, Chloe should have mentioned her, or Audrey should have mentioned her, and I'm like, why would they? Chloe doesn't like it, Audrey doesn't like it, she's not even related to Andre so why would he talk about it? It seems like he's never met her prior to Soul Crusher, it seems like their first meeting. But she was foreshadowed in the season 3 finale because we're all told we need a new Bee Miraculous holder because it can't be Chloe and who else is it gonna be? Like we've already made educated guesses about who the rest of the Miraculous is gonna go to out of the class and who else did you think Marinette was gonna give it to? Like Lila? 
Manon? No, she wouldn't. <laughs> she wouldn't because she knows Manon is too young to use it and Lila is not trustworthy in the slightest. And another key thing is that Zoe isn't a Chloe replacement. She's a Queen Bee replacement, which are two very, very different things. Obviously, I know Chloe is Queen Bee, but being a Chloe replacement versus being a Queen Bee replacement are two very different things. The reason Chloe has been getting less and less screen time, I know it's kind of going back up in season five, is because what Chloe represented in the show was petty drama that she caused a lot of people to get akumatized, but now the stakes are much higher and Marina and Adrian don't have time for Chloe. The way I view it is basically a bit like in Harry Potter, you had like the two antagonists of it. You had Voldemort, who was the more serious one, and then you had Draco Malfoy. I love Draco dearly, but he was like the petty bully in the school. And whilst no, it wasn't very nice, by the time Voldemort came around at the end of the school year, they had much bigger fish to fry than this one Slytherin lad who always threatened to call his dad, you know what I mean? Like, Chloe is the Draco Malfoy of Miraculous. So whilst no, she's not very nice, Adrian and Marinette have much bigger things going on. So the reason Chloe has been getting progressively less screen time is because the stakes are getting much higher and most of Chloe's drama, not all of it, but a lot of it, was often quite petty. Like the stuff going on with Lila at the minute, it seems like it's getting more and more serious. Hence why Chloe's getting more screen time this season, but didn't so much last season. Um, so that's the reason Chloe's been getting less screen time. Not because of Zoe, because the drama she caused was petty. And as we've all seen this season, things have been getting a lot more serious. Chloe only did really, really petty things, which is fine. She was great for like seasons one and two, but since things have got more serious now, she's slowly being kind of like, less and less screen time because it was just petty and things are far more serious now. Now in this video I'm not really going to talk about the destruction of Chloe's redemption arc, that's for another video that I want to make and I feel like I want to save it until the end of the season, see what they ultimately uh, do with Chloe and see where it goes and that'll structure my video basically. But I also see a lot of people saying Zoe is a product of lazy writing and she's not, she was foreshadowed and I don't think she's been rushed in the slightest. And people just saying she's nice and doesn't deserve all these things. Well, actually, yeah, she does because that's part of the message of the show. If you're nice, you get nice things, which is otherwise called karma. Hence why Chloe doesn't get this thing. Like I said, I wanna do another video on like Chloe's like destroyed redemption arc and if it can like be revived basically, but that's not for today, but we do kind of need to mention Chloe in this video because she's quite important to Zoe as a character and also it's kind of a large reason why a lot of people do dislike Zoe. But Chloe is by and large not a very nice person, so doesn't get those nice things. And Miraculous is for children, and when you write for children, it has to be a somewhat educational video. And because of that, it is teaching children that if you are a good person, good things happen to you. If you're a bad person, those things do not happen to you. So yeah. And another thing I also see is that Zoe has had no developments. Yes, she has. She's had plenty of development. In 407 Soul Crusher, she was having a real struggle between her family and being herself. Like she could have been, like it would have been so easy to be really mean and get Chloe and her mum to like her, but she chose to be a good and kind person and have these wonderful friends, but it made her home life kind of more hell. And yes, would it have been a bit more effective if we saw her struggle with it a bit more? Yes, but again, she's not the weird character. It would be weird to completely cut away from Marinette and Adrian and go and spend a whole episode with Zoe because she's not the lead character. It would be weird. And I would argue they do actually show her struggle with it when it is relevant. For example, in episode 11 that we've just had in the cafeteria scene, when Chloe starts talking about Marinette, Zoe stands up about to do something, but then she sits back down because she's like, no, this is gonna have bad consequences for me at home. It's already bad enough. But when Chloe goes to like, I don't know, like throw that pie or whatever it is at Marinette, Zoe's like, nope, nope, you're not doing that. So it does show Zoe struggling with it and also at the end she kind of mirrors Adrian with how alone she's gonna be. Like Zoe was great in that episode and it also shows she has more potential for growth. Like I think one of the things Zoe is gonna do is help redeem Chloe. I don't think it's gonna be this season. Too much is going on this season. Right, there's no time for Chloe to be redeemed this season. I don't think it's gonna happen this season. If they're gonna do it, it's not gonna be this season. But because Zoe is a side character, her development is very very slow because she She's not prominent in every single episode, the same way other side characters aren't prominent in every single episode. You know what I mean? So it's a very slow development that will grow further and further. Did you all expect her to like grow all the way in season four and then just plateau for the rest of the show? 
No, that would be even worse. Development is a slow thing. You know yourself when you've tried to change something about yourself. It doesn't usually happen overnight. It takes time. It's a process. It's gradual. And because Zoe is a side character, not the main character, it's even more gradual than it's been for Agent and Marinette. And if she developed super quickly, you'd all rightly say it was rushed and hate that too. So, you know, make your mind up. <laughs> so arguably, yes, Zoe may not be important enough to be the Cat Miraculous Holder or the Bee Miraculous Holder, but who else was it gonna be? The rest of the class are taken as other Miraculous Holder in terms of the Bee, like we could all work out who was gonna get which one. And other characters in the school, for example, Aurora and Marae, don't do anything anymore. I couldn't tell you the last thing either of them said in the show. I genuinely have no idea. I think maybe, I think Marae's really only spoken in the original Stormy Weather and Aurora in Stormy Weather 2. I feel like the last time we saw them was in actually Soul Crusher, interestingly, because Zoe gets put in Madame Mendeleev's like form classroom, Mark's in there, and I think so are Aurora and Marae. And I think that was the last time you've seen them. I could be wrong, but that was the last time I personally remember seeing the two of them. You just don't see them anymore. And as a result, they've become like almost background characters. I never would have called them side characters. They are most definitely background characters. And honestly, I forgot they existed. So who else would have got it in Queen Banana? Yes, Marinette could have merged it or Adrian could have merged it, but you know, sometimes it is easier to have more people on the team instead of doing a unification. So for example, in the episode Crocodile, they did kind of need three people in the team, so they needed Cat Noir to launch them up to um, where the, um, what's the name of the boat called? Whatever the boat's called, I forgot the name of the boat. Um, but they needed Ladybug to go to one parent and um, Purple Tigress to go to the other. They needed three people to be able to effectively execute that plan. But in an episode like Miracle Queen, because there was no one else around, they didn't know who they could trust. Both Ladybug and Cat Noir merged in Miraculous. We got Snake Noir and um, Dragon Book because there was no one else around, so they had no choice but to merge them. So there was really no one else prominent who was free and didn't already have a Miraculous who could have done it other than Zoe to get the Bee Miraculous in Queen Banana. So now the next gradual question then is, well, who else could have gotten the Cat Miraculous? And the only other character I feel like maybe could have got it, and I kind of would have liked to have seen him with it, would have been Nino, but again, he's really not trustworthy. <laughs> I don't know if Plague knows he's not trustworthy, but we all know he's not trustworthy. Uh, I would do hope he's gonna get better. I think he is getting better with all this resistance stuff going on, but you know, he's just... It's just not there yet, that's just the way it is. Um, so I feel like Zoe was really the only other option. Personally, I do agree if she was going to be so important this season and use the Cat Miraculous, even if only for two episodes, I would have liked to have her actually done something <laughs> prior to episode 10. Like, I think Zoe might appear once or twice, but I'm pretty sure she says, like, literally nothing up until that point. And so I would just would have liked to have her have more of a presence in this season prior to transmission, episode 10. Um, so I would have personally involved her more, but I don't think that means she was undeserving of using the Cat Miraculous. If anything, I think Zoe was absolutely the perfect person. She is very, very similar to Adrian in that they both have a, like an abusive and neglective upbringing slash household that they both have to live in and they're given a dangerous power to yield and it is very dangerous as we can see what's going on with Gabriel babes and um, but because of Zoe's kindness and good nature which is very similar to Adrian they are very similar characters she is able to use it for good whereas other people would abuse the power and if you don't think that's interesting and complex that sounds like a you problem rather than a Zoe problem. <laughs> So, like I said, about like, I would say roughly, without obviously having asked everyone in the fandom and calculated it all, roughly about 70% of the fandom really dislike Zoe, whether it was for a reason I've already gone through or for a different reason in general. And it's fine, you know, you don't have to like all the characters. I don't, but I would also argue for the characters I don't like, for example, Kagami, I don't put that much vitriol behind it unless it's for a joke. So for example, I did a video a few weeks ago, I think it was like in January, it was like, how would all the Miraculous Ladybugs characters die if this show was for adults? Um, and I made this uh, like joke about Chris, I think in Nino's section, that really poked fun at Chris and made him out to not be a very nice person, but it was for a joke. And I think most of you know when I talk about the characters I dislike, I usually do it in a joking way. 
but other people sadly are actually quite serious about it and I don't really understand why because these are fictional characters I don't quite get it but other people are pretty serious about it so let me give you an example so I had my YouTube channel for a whole year before I made the permanent switch to doing just miraculous content I started my channel as a way to help me gain more confidence because I'm a very nervous person and I have anxiety I don't do the best in social situations so I wanted to get more confidence so I kind of like I wasn't doing it with the intention of making money off it or like wanting fame or anything it was just to personally help me basically so it didn't really matter to me what I made videos on so if you go back to before I made just miraculous videos you'll see I made some miraculous videos I made some videos about PhD about writing about makeup just things I was interested in basically just to help me get more confident which by the way has definitely worked if you're looking to get more confident I know it's nerve wracking at first, but I recommend starting YouTube, starting TikTok, just something to get your voice out there. It helps so much, I would 100% recommend that. But anyway, I still remember a few weeks probably, I couldn't remember, I'd have to go back through the whole messages to find the exact date. But I still remember when I made the permanent switch to making only miraculous content, I got a message on Instagram don't remember who it was I don't think I've spoken to them since they were like hey I love your videos and I was like thank you very much and then they said um this is the name of Nino's new voice actor could you go and send some hateful messages to him because none of us like him and I was just like I'm sorry what like not that it's okay to just dislike a voice actor because they got a new one for a certain character that you may or may not have liked but then to go and ask somebody else to also do it it just blew my mind i was absolutely disgusted by it and speaking of which i think a lot of you know that the english voice actress for zoe has also got a lot of hate i don't know if it's the same for the other uh, language dubbing for zoe i have no idea what the uh, voice actors have got any hate but the english voice actress for zoe has got a lot of hate so i remember she had to like come out and say like hey i'm not actually zoe like yeah i do her voice but that's it there's no need for this and she's completely right like why would you like arguably all of the reasons why you dislike zoe has more than likely got nothing to do with the way she sounds in whatever language it's got to do with thomas astruck and the rest of the miraculous team but even then don't send hate to them either it's just a fictional character like do i like thomas astruck no i don't think he's a very nice person but i also don't think he deserves to be sent death threats like nobody does and just like that general toxicity towards thomas and other members of the team as well as some of the voice actors it's just it's a huge problem i think it's disgusting and don't get me wrong I know there are plenty of other problems in the fandom like I end up sometimes reading and it makes me so sad reading racist comments directed at Marinette or Alia and Kagami I also see uh, some of the other miraculous creators who are people of colour getting racist comments um, sent their way which is absolutely disgusting I myself because I'm disabled also get ableist comments sometimes and all just because we have a differing opinion like it's fine to disagree but me being disabled or the colour of someone's skin has nothing to do with whether or not they like a certain episode it's just disgusting like I still remember so um I stand by completely everything I said in my ephemeral analysis but the whole time I was filming that video and the whole time I was editing it I was so scared the response that video was gonna get because I hated the episode I still hate the episode and I was so disappointed it's meant to be the big 100 and it was absolutely awful it was terrible I think it was one of the worst episodes of the whole show and it's fine again if you disagree with me but I was so worried the whole time because like I don't want to lie and tell you why I thought it was amazing for all these reasons that I didn't believe I wanted to be honest but I was so scared about all the hate I might receive because of it because I know how toxic the fandom can be but yeah I was so scared the whole time I was filming that because I was like I am so sorry for disliking this whole entire episode but it just was not good and I I have to tell the truth I can't lie and pretend it was good so that's basically like the point of this video so whilst I have defended Zoe and given you reasons to like her and maybe look at her in a slightly different way that you might not have before but in the end if you still disagree with me if you still don't like Zoe that's completely fine you don't have to of course you don't I don't like Kagami I don't like Chris or other characters I also dislike we're not meant to like everything that's fine we're all very different people with different preferences but when you disagree or don't like something perhaps just try and do it with a bit more compassion like if you don't like Zoe cool move on she's not even real why do you care enough to bully people 
who do like it. And like, that's not an exaggeration. I've seen people who dislike Zoe bully people and really upset people who do like Zoe. And the only reason they're bullying them is because they like Zoe. And that's it. I know most of you know this already, but this fandom, I'm not really sure how or why. Like I wasn't really part of it properly until I'd say like partway through season three. So I'm not sure how it started exactly. Uh, but this fandom is very toxic. And I think the people who regularly comment on my videos, for the most part, you're all absolutely lovely. Um, and even when we do disagree, it's respectful and kind. But the hatred I have seen, which is largely the reason why you never see me in other people's comment sections, is because it's just not worth commenting. And I certainly don't get people who hate watch the show. Like obviously you can do whatever you want with your time and as a writer I actually do see the value in watching something you don't view to be very good so you can learn from it like what not to do. Like learning what to do is just as valuable as learning not what to do. And I can also even see the value in watching a whole season of something. So you can look at stuff like pacing and structure. If you think that's what's bad about it you really need to watch the whole season. So for example um when the first season of The Handmaid's Tale came on, if you're not over 18, please don't watch The Handmaid's Tale. Um, but when it finally came out, my mum was like, let's watch it together. And I was like, okay, whatever. It wasn't really my thing, but I watched the whole thing. And like, whilst the commentary about the world and stuff like that is really interesting in it, in terms of writing, I didn't think it was very good. Um, and I told her that, my mum was like, okay, cool. But I watched the whole first season with her because she didn't want to watch it on her own. I don't know why. <laughs> she was like, I don't want to watch it on my own. So I was like, okay, mum. But I did learn a lot from it in terms of what not to do when I was writing myself. So I do see the value in watching something you don't think is very good and even watching a whole season of something that you don't think is very good. But when we are on 100 plus episodes of a TV show that you claim is terrible and you are still watching it just to hate it, I think that says more about you than the quality of the show don't you? Like a lot of the comments I see online, I just, they're just so hateful. It sometimes does make me so sad. Like there's no room for constructive feedback. Like I try to do that in my videos when I say like, I didn't like this about the episode. I try and say, maybe they could have done this instead. And I really get annoyed at myself when I say, yeah, I don't like this, but I'm not sure what they could have done to fix it. I hate it when I do that. I always like to come with a solution. So for example, in Psychomedian, I, for the most part, really liked the episode. Like, was it the best episode ever? No, but it, like, it was a good filler episode. I quite enjoyed it, especially the amount of time we had to wait for it. <laughs> um, so I really liked it. Uh, but one thing I definitely didn't like about the episode was the whole cringy bit with Joe, like the, the cowboy hat and stuff like that. That was on the nose and yeah, I hated that scene so much. Oh God, I hated it. Um, so like my idea to fix that was because first of all I found it weird that Marinette just knew this comedian or whatever was that the class went on a school trip to watch this comedy show and Chloe and Marinette were basically fighting over who got to sit next to Adrian and they could have fixed that easily to get them all to that location and have the same person be akumatized without having the need for it to be cringy. Like I, I find it annoying for example like when someone's read my writing and I'm like oh you don't like did you like it? And they're like no and I'm like oh what about it did you not like? I don't know, I just didn't, that's not very helpful. Like, so just saying all out all the things you hate about the show in a list with no way to fix it, it just comes across as really hateful. It's not helpful in any way, shape or form to just list all the things you hate with no way to fix them really. So like I said, it's fine to dislike someone, but this is a TV show for eight year olds. <laughs> is it really worth your energy? Continuing to watch a TV show that is at 100 plus episodes, not at 10 plus, we're at 100 plus episodes and write hateful essays about how it's the worst things on the earth and this one character called Zoe is terrible? No, it'll just end up making you a horrible person. <coughs> so, in conclusion, is Zoe the best written character of all time? No, but does she need to be? Also no. Ideally, yes, should all characters and all episodes and everything about the show be of the same quality as everything else? Yes, but in a show like Miraculous Ladybug where Marinette is getting the bulk of the screen time followed by Adrian and then Alia and Gabriel getting a lot this season too, it's hard for other characters to shine if they're not the leads. Which is totally normal for any TV show. Any TV show or film or book, whatever, when you look at it and you pick one of the side characters, they won't have much on them because they're a side character, not a main. 
but if you aren't the lead that character isn't going to get anywhere near as much development or screen time and I don't see anyone saying the same sorts of things about Max or Kim or Rose or Julika or Nathaniel or whoever else in the class or else is a side character in the show. I see no one saying it about those characters. Only Zoe. Zoe for her role in the show in my opinion as both a member of this fandom and as a professional writer she has developed nicely if we take into consideration her significance and she also has plenty of room left to grow which is also really important too. You don't want to finish developing and then do nothing forever. You want it to carry on developing steadily. The only thing I would really seriously criticise where Zoe is concerned is that I really feel since episode 10 and 11 were really big episodes for her with the Cat Miraculous is that I would have involved her in season 5 prior to episode 10 a bit more. Even just a few lines here and there, I would have involved her a bit more. In my opinion, the only thing wrong with Zoe is how everyone else has reacted to her. But in the end, like I said, it's okay if you disagree with me. Not everyone will like the same things and that's okay. I just hope the main thing you take away from this video is that it's okay to dislike something, but that doesn't mean you get to be rude or bully people who like that thing, whether that's Zoe or Marinette or Adrian or Gabriel, whatever doesn't mean you get to do that. And maybe that sounds like a bit of a silly statement to make, but sadly it's the truth. People in this fandom bully others over literally anything and I don't get it <laughs> in the slightest. So it's fine if you don't like her, but just be kind about it. She's not even real. She's definitely not worth arguing about, okay? So besties, I love to know what you think. If you like Zoe, if you dislike Zoe, whatever your opinion is, just please be respectful in the comments. So I'd love to know what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!